Today in pre-cal, we learned about inverses and one-to-one. -one. Those two ideas are definitely connected. Starting with inverses, part A. To find the inverse algebraically, there are four steps. And step number one is to replace f of x with y. Step number two is to switch x and y. Step number three is to solve for y. And step number four is to replace y with f inverse of x. That's just a notational thing, that f to the negative 1 power of x means f inverse. Let's look over some examples. Example number 1. If I do f of x equals 5 minus 3x over 2, I'm going to replace f of x with y. That was step number 1. Then I'm going to switch x and y. Then I'm going to solve for y. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. 2x equals 5 minus 3y, subtract 5 from both sides, 2x minus 5 equals negative 3y, divide both sides by negative 3, and that's what y equals, so that's what f inverse equals, 2x minus 5 over negative 3, and that's our final answer. See that that's not all in your view, so let me bring that through and make sure you get a good look at all of that. I just subtracted 5 from both sides and canceled that out, divided by negative 3, and changed my sign. Let's look at another example like that. Example number 2, f of x equals the cube root of x plus 1. Okay, we're going to replace f of x with y. Then we want to switch x and y. We want to solve for y by cubing both sides, so the cube root and cube cancel. And I have x cubed equals y plus 1, subtract 1 from both sides, and x cubed minus 1 equals y. So f inverse of x equals x cubed minus 1. And that's my final answer. Again, I see that's out of your view, so there you go. The next thing we talked about was how to solve it graphically. So that was algebraically. If we wanted to do it graphically by looking at the graph, if AB is on the graph of f of x, then BA is on the graph of f inverse of x. And that's just a definition. Sorry, I'm having a hard time keeping it in your view today. Let's look at an example of that. Example number three. If I have f of x equals x squared and f inverse of x equals the square root of x, and I want to check, are those inverses or not? By looking at a graph, I could get some points from the table, either in the calculator, or I could generate some points. I'm going to generate a few. So if I plug in 0, 1, 2, and 3 for x, x squared would be 0, 1, 4, and 9. Then if I copy those over into y, over in x, I do 0, 1, 4, and 9. If I take the square root of 0, it's 0, 1, 2, and 3. Since those are mirror images of each other, yes, this is an inverse. Okay, let's look at how that might look in the calculator. So if we want to see what it looks like in the calculator, we put in x squared and square root of x. And I'm going to go ahead and put in y equals x because anything that's an inverse is symmetrical about that line y equals x. And as you can see, those two are symmetrical about that line. Finally, the last thing we talked about today, part B, was one-to-one -one functions. And one-to-one -one functions just pass the horizontal line test, meaning a function has an inverse if and only if no horizontal line intersects the graph of f more than once.
So, for example, number four, if I look at the graph of f of x equals x squared, and I cross it with a horizontal line, notice it crosses twice, so this one has no inverse. Another example, f of x equals x to the third power. If we looked at that one and looked at what its graph looked like, we know that that looks like this. And I could cross with a bunch of horizontal lines and it never crosses twice. So the answer is yes, it is one to one. Finally, the assignment for this is A13, which is pages 99 and 100. They're very short, although it seems like a lot of problems. 9 to 12, 29 to 36, 39 to 40, 42 to 44, and 48. And on the second group right here, you're doing part A only. If you need help, let me know.